Well, good evening. It is Friday night, Good Friday service. Stacy and I are here. Stacy's got our devotion tonight. Hopefully, you've been following along with our Holy Week devotions um, that we've been posting or that have been live uh, throughout the week. Um, some great, some great nuggets of wisdom have been shared, and uh, truly been blessed by that. And I know we're going to be blessed tonight. I'm going to pray um, just to give you a little bit of heads up about. What's going on? I'm going to pray, and then Stacy's going to share the word uh, with us tonight. Uh, make it conversational here. We'll see how it goes, and then uh, and then I'll I'll uh, wrap us up with communion. Hopefully, you got your communion elements. If not, press pause. Run in your kitchen, grab some juice, a piece of bread, um, and uh, and and feel free to join us. Jump back on and join us when when you have that. Stacy, I'm so thankful that uh, that we could do this together. And uh, we're about six feet apart, so don't worry. <laughs> and um, let me pray for us, and Stacy will dive in. God, thank you so much um, just for the sacrifice. God, as we've sung songs uh, leading up to this, um, God, that reflect that, and we're so thankful um, that we know the end of the story, um, that God, tonight is not the end of the story. But God, as we look back... Um, Thankful as we look back, uh, sorrowful for what those days um, that, that, that we remember tonight must have felt like and looked like um, for the people that walked closely to Jesus. Um, God, wherever we're at tonight, I just pray that you'd minister to our hearts through your word and through this time that we can be together on this platform. And so we just uh, give this time to you. I pray that you use Stacy in a mighty way uh, as he shares your word with us tonight. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Stacy. Amen. Thanks, Travis. Um, yeah, so it's, um, we're continuing our series of, of these daily devotionals that, that the elder team has been bringing to you throughout the Holy Week. And so um, I've been enjoying those. I hope you guys have been too. And so we're at the point where, we, where we've reached um, Friday. And it was, it was on a Friday all those years ago that Jesus was crucified. Good Friday. Um, and chances are pretty good that, that this particular Good Friday, it's different than any other one that, that you've experienced. I know it is for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a few years ago, my family established this sort of new tradition of we, we've been traveling down to Nashville for Good Friday to attend the Chris Tomlin concert down there. And so this year, um, our trip got canceled. Our flight got canceled. Our hotel, the whole concert's been canceled. I saw you <coughs> last you? Good Friday in the Nashville airport. You remember that? I do we remember that. We were coming that. home from vacation. Yeah. And you, you were heading down to the Chris That's Tomlin right. concert. Lindsay, we Lindsay saw each other I. in the Nashville airport. Yeah. I remember that now. Okay, <laughs> sorry, keep going. Oh, no, no problem. Um, but, but, so, that's, it seems like everything's just a little bit different mm -hmm. now. Um, you know, I, I'm a contractor, and so, so, we've been able to, I guess we've been deemed essential, and <laughs> we've been able to continue our work, but even that, being able to continue, it's not like it hasn't been changed. Mm. Um, I build a lot of homes for this retirement community. It's a, it's a 55 plus, and so the people there, they're particularly, you know, aware of the virus and everything that's going on. Um, and w but one of the things that, that I enjoy most about being a builder and working in this retirement community is that I'm able to build these relationships with people, with the homeowners as I build their home. We get trust, we get a relationship, we make decisions together. And so um, last week I got this phone call from um, one of my clients, it's a lady named Nancy, um, she's the sweetest lady. Mm. And uh, she needed me to come and take a look at this garbage disposal in her house and she said that, uh, that it had stopped working the sink wasn't working right, it wasn't draining. And so I, I went over there and I knocked on the door and normally I'd meet her at the door and I'd just walk right in mm. because we're almost like family. Um, 
but with the concerns of the virus and everything, you know, it's this kind of awkward dance where you talk through the glass door, you let her back up down the hallway a yeah, distance yeah. before I come in the house, and just um, maintaining this distance all the time. And so what she told me was that this garbage disposal stopped working after she had, by mistake, um, walked away, left the switch on. Um, and, and I could tell that she, this had just thrown her off. She was upset. Um, she was upset with herself for doing, um, you know, making a mistake. I think she was upset that the sink wasn't working and that it might, you know, worrying about that this might cost her, mm. you know, something that she wasn't planning on. And so I just, I tried to um, reassure her that whatever it was, it was minor, we'd take care of it, it would get fixed. Um, and then after a minute or two of, of checking, I found this um, reset button at the bottom of the garbage disposal. And, and I pushed it in and I clicked it, and I reached up and hit the switch, and on came the garbage disposal. It was that simple. Hmm. And it was fixed. And I looked over at Nancy, who's standing, you know, six feet away. And, and I kind of smiled at her and said, you're all set, Nancy. It's all fixed. Back in business. Well, she started tearing up. Hmm. You know, and, and I think it was just relief. Um, because she kind of laughed as she cried. And she said, I'm, I'm sorry, but it seems like, you know, everything just makes me cry. Hmm. now these days hmm. and my heart just felt for her, you know because I could see the whole stress of a little thing you know added on top a little thing like a garbage disposal not working um, and she's a retired um, you know I think hmm. a widowed lady you know living by herself everybody keeping their distance and and all of that worry and of this virus, and, and I think it all just it kind of overwhelmed her. Yeah. And so I said, I'd give you a hug, Nancy, and I would, because I remember the day that I finished her house and she moved in, she came and she gave me the biggest hug. Mm. And I said, I, I'd give you a hug, Nancy, but she said, I know, but it, it'll just have to be a virtual hug, you know? A <laughs> virtual hug, that's good. A virtual hug. Yeah. But... That's just not right. Yeah. And I think that we're all dealing with things right now that just aren't right. That, um, that everything now is a little bit of a struggle that you can't go to the grocery store now. Mm. You got to wait in line. Yeah. That the simplest things that we took for granted and we used to be able to do, they involve, you know, extra effort, precautionary steps. You got to think about every single thing that you do. Um, but I think that the area that, that has hit the worst is, is in our relationships. Mm. Because of the threat of this, um, this invisible virus, we've got to keep our distance. And we can't just um, go and gather together, so now our communications, they're, they're done through video, or live stream, Facebook Live, um, YouTube and Zoom meetings. Zoom, yep. yep. And so you know, you've done them all, um, that, that all of them, you know, even though they're these great tools, they're, um, they're workarounds. Mm. They're, they're compromises. Because as helpful as they are, they just aren't as good as the real thing. They don't work as well as the real thing. Because a TV, a TV screen, you know, isn't a substitute for sharing a meal and a mm -hmm. conversation with a friend. Amen. Live stream worship, you know, on Sunday isn't the same as gathering with a group and hearing a hundred voices together. Amen. Um, an elbow bump is no substitute for a handshake. And a virtual hug could never be the same thing as wrapping your arms around somebody that you, just, that you love. Mm. And so we've been separated. We've been pulled apart from each other. All of our relationships, they've been strained. And that in all of this, that we've been asked to make some sacrifices to endure this new social distancing thing. And, 
while it's becoming kind of new and normal to us, um, each of us, I think, is looking forward to the day that we can get back to the way that things were before the virus hit. Yeah. And so um, we're looking forward to that day when we get back to when it worked. Mm -hmm. We're looking forward to the joy and the happiness of being together with our friends and in our family and our loved ones again. And, and it's that vision because we've seen it. We know what it is. We know what it looked like before. It's that vision, that picture that's in our hearts and our minds it, 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 that'll carry us through this. Yeah. It lets us endure. That's right. Right? That's right. And so for our devotional and our, and our, um, our, our Bible verse today and the passage that we're looking at, um, it, it sort of tells us in somewhat of a similar way, I'm trying to relate it here um, to current events, but it tells us that in a similar way that, that Jesus endured the pain and the suffering of the cross because of the joy that he knew that awaited on the other side of it. Yeah. That's right. There was something he needed to get through this in order to get there. Yeah. And so Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2, Paul kind of, well, I say Paul. don't really know who wrote Hebrews, but, right. um, but he kind of relates the things that we have to endure in life as a race. Mm -hmm. And so he says, um, you know, I'm, and I'm cutting kind of in the middle here, but he says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Yeah. So it says that who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. What was that? I mean, what do you think that, that joy, what do you, what do you get from that? Yeah, well, I've always heard, you know, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. You know, we're the joy. You know, and that's a special piece of that verse. We talked about in prayer meeting a week and a half ago about, you know, the cup that, that the Father had given Jesus. And this was, this was his cup, but it was his joy. And, and uh, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're that joy. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a joyful thing. You know, we call Good Friday. Right. It wasn't that that thing, that Jesus, you know, what happened, you know, the pain, the suffering in itself, mm -hmm. if you just looked in itself of, of that crucifixion, that wasn't joyful. Right. That wasn't good. Right. But when you put that together with the reason of why he did it and what, yeah. you know, we, we so much gain from that, that's when it becomes Good Friday and the joy. Mm -hmm. And so thinking about this and thinking about, um, our relationships and how they're all strained during this virus and how we know what it looked like before the virus mm -hmm. and we want to get back to that. Yeah. Jesus knew what our relationship with God um, looked like before sin ever entered the world. Wow. Yeah, that's good. And so the joy is that you know, that invisible, that, that's our sin. It's just as invisible as coronavirus, but man, it, it is more, um, more destructive. Yeah. It's more lethal. Yeah. You know, the, the, the death rate of sin is 100%, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Without Jesus Christ. That's right. But what he did on that cross on that Good Friday and why it's good is that, that he got there and he took the hit for us so that we could come back into relationship with God. Amen. We were never designed. The reason that the Zoom doesn't work, that, um, that social distancing doesn't feel right to us, that, that the separation just is off, it throws everything off, is because we were never designed to be like this with each other. And so much more so 
we were never de designed to be apart from, from God. Yeah. And so I want to say, and, and I know, is that, you know, when, when Jesus went to that cross and went to the cross kind of just minimalizes it. I mean, we, mm -hmm. if you just say you went to the cross, it doesn't capture everything that happened there. But um, he had that vision of, of us in our real home mm -hmm. with our father, mm -hmm. with our brothers and sisters, the way that we were, we were meant to be. That's, that's, what, that's what I think the joy of the cross um, that he had when he went to the cross was. Yeah. And so, um, so kind of like to wrap it up, and I think in the challenge, um, you know, each of us, everyone, is that we are going to get back. You know, we're going to get over this, over this hump of this coronavirus. It's going to be a temporary thing that we've had to endure. Um, but the challenge, I think, is this, that... that um, Right now, we can, we can get some perspective from it mm -hmm. and to realize, wait a minute, and stop and think about this and say, you know, that, that really it is, that, that the things don't work because they never were meant to. We, weren't, mm -hmm. we were meant to be together, to relate to each other, to have relationships. And, but even when we get back to the good old days, that I think we're going to soon find that um, even minus the coronavirus, that this world isn't perfect. Yeah. There's more struggles that are going to come up. There's more things to endure. And so that's my, that would be my challenge, is that um, to, to not look for and expect this place to be heaven to be more than it is, yeah. but to know that, that waiting for us, those of us that believe in Jesus Christ, that waiting for us is a joy that we can't even imagine. Yeah. So, so let me ask you, let me ask you just before we go into communion for, for you, because I, I love your heart and, um, and I, I miss, uh, I miss checking in with you about every other week for breakfast and Same connecting there. in that yeah. way because it doesn't, my mentor told me the first Sunday that we were online, I called him that evening because Sundays just feel weird now. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and just asked him how he was doing. And uh, he's, he's older, and so his technology um, <clears throat> is, 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 he doesn't have a Dylan that posts all of his stuff online like we do. Yeah. And, um, and, and he said, you know, 50% of preaching is engaging with the people in the room. Yeah. And when you're doing that with a camera, it's, it's a lot different. It's a lot harder. Uh, so I miss that. I, I think that's one of the biggest reasons that Sundays are just, they're just weird now, um, because I, I miss, I miss it. I think there's value, and there's, anyway, that'll be my second question, but for you, because I appreciate your heart so much, what does it, what does it do for you? What does it stir in you that you were on the mind of Christ when he was hanging on that cross? It, um, <clears throat> it makes me homesick. Yeah. That we had a Savior that wanted so much to be with us that He went through that so that we could be with Him forever. Yeah, the, the, um, the value of anything is, is um, it's the price that someone's willing to pay for it, right? That's right. And... Have you thought about, I mean, obviously you shared some of that in your devotion. And this is the last thing, this yeah. is the last thing and we'll go to communion. But <clears throat> have you thought about, like, what's one thing that's going to be different for you when it goes back to normal? Have you thought about anything, like, with God or with, with your church here or anything like that? Like, if you, if, you thought, if you thought, okay, there are some things I can learn in this time. Um, but like you said, you haven't been affected as much as other folks. You're right. still going to work yeah. every day. Yep. You know, you're still seeing Nancy and yes. different yeah. things. And while it's different, but but like you said, you're still affected. Things yeah. are still affected. But have you have you thought or given any thought to?
maybe one thing that's just, I'm going to value this more on the other side of this thing. Well, I hope, here's, here's what, you know, I, I think um, we like to think, is that this is going to have, um, you know, a, a monumental, like, impact on us. Mm. And, and I think we'll go back and, and look at it from time to time. I just, um, and think about it, and this is what I'm going to, this is what I'm going to think about is like, again, that this, this isn't my home. And this is, this is just more proof of it. That like, that this is a hostile environment yeah. for you and me. You know, we're, we're here. The Bible says that we're, it, it uses words like alien, strangers, you know, pilgrims, visitors to this place. Hmm. And it kind of paints this whole picture that this, we're here. We're visitors here. But this isn't, this isn't all there is. This isn't home. Yeah. So I, I hope and I pray that, um, that, like, that sticks, that really sticks with me um, yeah. more than ever. Um, you know, that, that, that would be my... Definitely. That would be my prayer. Stacy, thank you. Thank you. Man, yeah. What, a, what an awesome, what an awesome devotion and just love this guy and how he shares his heart. And so I know you are blessed. And I want to move into a time of communion. And I just thought it'd be appropriate, if you're all right with it, I'm going to share uh, the communion passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And, uh, and I'm going to start in verse, um, in verse 20, 23. Excuse me. For I received from the Lord... Would also deliver to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me in remembrance of me and, you know, I think it's so important that um, I, I feel like every Good Friday I have the thought that Jesus never said to remember his birth. But he, but he made sure to say, do this in remembrance of, of me and, and, and celebrate, you know, and, 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 and come to this table, right, in remembrance of me, my death. Because of what the death meant. Right. Right? And like I said, we know the story. I won't give you the spoiler. You'll have to tune <laughs> back in on Sunday for that. Um, but if you'll take your, if you'll take your cups, um, hopefully you, you've got something. If not, um, I do encourage you to take this time of communion as a, a time to, um, as a time to repent, as a time to turn from some things, as a time to, Give some things to, to over to the Lord from the week. I don't know about you, Stacy, but uh, there are a lot of distractions, I think, just floating around. I think if I could use one word that maybe troubles my heart most right now, it would be just that we feel distracted. We yeah. seem distracted, whether that's from the virus or whether that's from the kids' school work or just all the different sources of things, just distracted. And, uh, and so maybe now is the time to just say, God, in the, in the next 15 minutes or however long it is, God, I, 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 I'm not going to be distracted. God, I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to fear. But God, in faith, I'm going to come to the table. And so on the night, he was with his disciples as we read. He took the bread. He pulled that bread out and he broke it. And said, this is my body. This is his provision. Right? This is our, this is, this is our going home, right? Mm -hmm. Because of his body, the provision, we have hope. And so God, I thank you for the body. God, I thank you that you, while we were yet sinners, sent your son to die for us. God, you knew um, God, God, you knew how we were going to turn out, and yet for the joy that was set before Jesus, 
He endured the cross. And so God, I thank You for the provision that is in the body of Christ. And I pray that as we eat, that we would give thanks tonight for the sacrifice of Your Son. It's in His name I pray. Amen. God bless you as you eat. And then we read that he took the cup after dinner and blessed it. And said, this is my blood poured out for you. And I I feel like I do this every time we take communion, but what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Christ. You know, there was no return policy on our lives. He bought us with His blood. And so God, I thank You for Your blood. The blood of Your Son that washes us white as snow. And so God, if there's anything in our hearts right now, if there's anything in our lives right now that we need to repent of, God, we give it to You. God, we ask that you would take it away in Jesus' name. God, that, 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 that this blood that we're symbolically taking tonight, this juice, God, that you um, would wash us white as snow. And God, the promise is that you've already won the victory. God, that you've already done that through your Son. And so we thank you for that promise tonight. And I just pray that shame would be broken right now in Jesus' name that addictions would be broken right now. God, that we would come back to You and that we'd be washed by the blood tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you as you drink. Amen. Amen. And the Scripture says that after they had the Lord's Supper, after they came to the table, that they stood and they sang together. And so, last week, I think it was, Dylan and Bree and I came in this room and we recorded some songs that we're going to be doing tonight. And so, uh, so as Stacy and I go here, uh, I do encourage you, like the disciples in that upper room did, uh, in a moment of no doubt confusion, mm-hmm. because they had just taken this meal not really knowing what was about to happen. Um, <clears throat> even though as many times as Jesus had tried to tell them, um, I encourage you to stand and sing or sit and sing or wherever you're at. Just uh, sing this next song with us and then I'll come back and tell you, tell you goodnight. But we love you guys. Stacy, thank you. Thank you, an awesome Travis. job. And let's sing together.